Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And we are friends. We've worked on this committee because we both have an unabiding uh, uh, commitment to the security of this nation. I'm delighted to see Administrator Pistol and thank him uh, before he even starts for his leadership. This is a time for tough choices, tough decisions, and uh, strong commitments uh, to secure this nation. Uh, I would offer to say that uh, because of this uh, committee and the leadership of ranking member and chairman, uh, that uh, in actuality the United States has, uh, through some very, very difficult times, managed to secure itself since 9-11, horrific act uh, that no one will ever forget uh, throughout history and the annals of history of this nation. Uh, it was on that day uh, that the security of this nation through airports was privatized. Uh, and it was on that day that private security entities uh, allowed individuals who ultimately sent planes into the towers in New York to kill thousands of persons. So I have a vigorous disagreement, and I am hoping that the administration will courageously hold the line. Uh, this is not a time for politicizing and making people happy, and uh, it's not a time for uh, humoring small businesses. And I am, uh, in my mind, and the work that I have done, uh, considered uh, a avid supporter of small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large businesses, uh, and the work that is done in procurement to assure that the American business has an opportunity to serve um, its nation. But on this one, uh, I believe um, in one point of the chairman, he is right that we need to be fiscally responsible. Uh, we need to assess our needs. We need to ensure that uh, individuals are placed and utilized in the TSA structure and the transportation security officer structure in the most efficient, appropriate, and secure manner that we possibly can have. Mr. Chairman, you are right about that question. But I cannot adhere to a mass reform, massive reform, that would uh, provide for an expansion uh, of the um, screening partnership program uh, without the appropriate limitations that are presently in place today. So I'd like to thank uh, the uh, witness and witnesses for joining us today to discuss TSA's Screening Partnership Program, commonly referred to as SPP. Under this program, airports may apply to opt out of using federal screening workforce. In January 2011, based on uh, the review of the administrator, Administrator Pistol decided not to expand the SPP beyond the 16 currently participating airports unless there was a clear and substantial benefit to doing so. And I might add there should be uh, a security analysis in this as well. And I hope my words, substantial benefit in his testimony or questioning, we will discern that substantial benefit or clear and substantial benefit uh, does not ignore the security ramifications. <clears throat> According to TSA, operating the SPP costs taxpayers more than using the Federal Screener Workforce. Uh, in light of that fact and these tight budgetary times, that would be reason enough to support the administrator's decision not to expand the program, but the list goes on. Further expansion of privatized screening hampers TSA's ability to push out intelligence information to frontline workers, and it adds to inconsistency. It makes changing procedures based on threat more complex. That means you not only have to vet the frontline officers, you've got to vet the company, vet the executives of the company, vet the ownership, uh, vet the financial structure of this, vet the banks that the private company goes to, who's paying whom to turn their head and to overlook uh, some dastardly act that is prepared to attack American citizens as they travel uh, the skies of America. There have been much discussion of whether privatized screeners perform better than their Federal counterparts. I'm always supportive of making sure that our Federal employees across the board are respected but also do their job. And there is no conflict with insisting on excellence in performance uh, to uh, the idea that I have uh, that privatized screeners um, are not adequate. Make the Federal employees excellent. That has been done in many, many places. We certainly don't criticize our first responders 
in terms of their service, and we have no criticism of the young men and women who have come into our military service, non-privatized, who have offered themselves to serve. We would expect no less from transportation security officers. They are on the front line. TSA informs us that the performance of privatized screeners is comparable to that of the federalized workforce. I want our TSO to be better than privatized workers, and I believe our focus should be how we achieve that. We don't need equals in this business. The Federal Government is always expected to be better than. We have the responsibility of millions of Americans all across this nation. They look to us, this great nation, who uses the terminology great, to be great and to be excellent. The reality is that this, uh, the security incidents have occurred at both airports with privatized and federalized screeners. Under the watch of privatized screeners at San Francisco International Airport, a woman pushed through a closed checkpoint lane boarded a plane and flew to Baltimore without ever being screened. The statute establishing the SPP did not endeavor to micromanage TSA's decision to include or exclude an airport from participation. It was to show a sense of openness. Sixteen is enough. Rather, it gave proper deference to the Administrator's judgment by stating that he may approve an, app an application. Now I know from this very hearing we will see the potential of Amendments coming in, uh, Mr. Administrator, trying to demand and say that you shall, uh, just as uh, we have seen um, in the language of the FAA bill. That is unfortunate. Uh, and I am sorry that we are having this hearing after the fact. But I will live to rise again. And I will find a way, just like others did, to undo that, because I think it is wrong. Unfortunately, despite having never been debated by this committee, the Committee of Jurisdiction and no members being appointed conferees on behalf of the committee, the controlling statute was amended in the FAA Reauthorization Act, which will soon become law. That is called midnight legislating, in the dark, no transparency, uh, and adhering to the voices of one tune. The new standard limits TSA's flexibility to approve or deny an application from an airport to opt out places a time limitation of 120 days on TSA to determine whether to approve an application and provides a waiver for the requirement that a private contracted screening company be owned and controlled by a United States citizen. Now, just a few years ago, everyone was up in arms about the potential of ports being owned by foreign entities. We have resolved and or uh, studied that issue, and I assume that it is still being studied. But there is no doubt that aviation still remains one of the most attractive uh, entities for individual franchise terrorists. And now we suggest waivers, even if the company is owned by a foreign or the airport is owned by a foreign entity. How outrageous. I look forward to hearing from the Administrator on his views of the changes to the SPP statute and how he intends to continue to develop TSA into the federal counterterrorism network he envisions. He comes with years of experience with the FBI, who I understand and he knows full well are meticulous in their responsibilities, ensuring the security domestically. We can do no less when it comes to this nation's uh, skies and as well for those who travel internationally on our soil into our area. As we look forward to what I hope will be a productive year, Mr. Chairman, let us not forget the lessons of the past, one of which is that the system of privatized screeners failed us on 9-11. There is no further sentence that I need to make. The 9-11 day of horror was partly on the watch of privatized screeners. The wisdom of the United States Congress in the immediacy of those tragic days was to come together and find a way to ensure that TSO was a Federal system of which we had the opportunity to provide intelligence, training, oversight, and, yes, security for the American people. I see nothing has changed today, and I would hope we change nothing in spite of the FAA legislation. I ask the Administration to reject the premise of that legislation, even as it has been signed. I yield back. 